All right, our next video is gonna start on page 12. So we're using parallelograms. So quadrilateral PQRS is a quad is a parallelogram. What is the measure of angle KSP? KSP. They want to know this angle. All right. So if it's a parallelogram, the angles next to each other are supplementary, and I notice that these angles are congruent. So if I can figure out this angle, I can know both of these. So let's see. 180 minus 76, I didn't know why I needed that, okay, 104. Now both of these are congruent, so I'm gonna divide that by two to get 52. So that means this is 52 and this is 52. Now these add up to equal 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 52 equals 38, so A. In the diagram, I have a parallelogram. I'm told SV is x plus three, VU is two x minus one, and TU is four x minus three. What is SV? Well, opposite sides in the parallelogram are congruent. We are gonna set them equal. So this doesn't need to be used at all. So tract x, add three, Divide by 3, 2 equals x. I'm not done. They want the length of SV. Plug this in, and you will get 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. Here I'm told in this parallelogram, DF, DF is 5x minus 1. What is x? F. All right, so all I know is the whole thing in these two parts. Now I know that the diagonals in the parallelogram bisect each other. So I need to use this. They bisect each other, so these are congruent. So subtract so three x, divide by negative one, x is five. So if x is five, I can plug it in here. So five times five minus one gives me 24. And again, they bisect each other. So the whole thing is 24, cut that in half. I don't see that answer. My answer is 12. Using the same diagram in question three, this one is EG perpendicular to df. Why or why not? Well, if I plugged this 5 in here, I'd get 10 and 10. This is 12 and 12. Um, the diagonals are not congruent unless it is a square, and it's not a square because, well, the diagonal's not congruent. So let's see. No, the diagonals are not congruent. What measure of angle DAB would show ABCD is a parallelogram? Well, let's see, I need angles. So this and this should be um, congruent, opposite angles are congruent. So let's see, 2z plus 15 equals 3z minus 17. Subtract 2z, 15 equals z minus 17, add 17. So z equals 32. So if I plug this in for z, so 3 times 32 minus 17, that'll give me 79, and that should be this angle and this one. Um, consecutive angles should be supplementary. So the measure of angle DAB, 180 equal 180 minus 79, which would be 101. All right, 
Now, this one uses this picture. It says what values of x and y would show a, b, c, d is a parallelogram. Opposite sides should be congruent. Now, these have y. This has x and x and y. So I've got to solve this first. So 2y plus 3 equals 3y minus 2. So 3 equals y minus 2. Add 2. So that's 5. I need to plug this in here. So I can set these equal. So 2x plus, that's 20, equals 3x minus 3. So track 2x, add 3. Those are my values of x and y. All right, let's see. Mrs. Davis gave her students all the steps of the proof below. One step is not needed. Which step is not necessary to complete the proof? All right, so let's see. I have a parallelogram. Well, I need to use that because that's what's given to me. And I need what I'm trying to prove. Definitely necessary. So let's see. Um, if it's a parallelogram, we know that the... Uh, sides are parallel and it says that they use side 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 that's a side that's a side that's a side this is an angle I didn't even use that so step three actually is the one that I don't need all right I'm using constructions here so this is what is the final step in this construction so I know I have a segment and I have these arcs that were formed right by placing the compass here and here and when they cross I should be connecting these intersection points so let's see use a straight edge to connect points a and b all right so in order to construct the interior point of c a b for the angle bisector where should you place the compass well if I already have these points that's already been formed I need to place my compass at B to draw an arc this way and C to draw an arc this way. So B and C. Select all the statements that describe the steps to copy a segment. Using a ruler, we do not use rulers and constructions. Use a straight edge to draw a line L and label point M. All right, definitely want that. Place the compass at X and open it to the length. Okay, I want to know how long that is. Using the same setting, place the compass at M and draw an arc. I would definitely want to do that, and we could mark that as N. With a setting greater than one half of, I don't want anything greater than, so I just want these three. All right, next one, more constructions. Um, Carol, Carolina wants to construct a polygon inscribed in a circle by paper folding. She completes the following steps. So she folds a paper in half. All right. Folding a paper in half, make a crease. So I should have a circle on here. So I'm folding this in half, making a crease. Take the half circle and fold it into thirds. Let's see if I can do this. One, two, three. Crease along the sides of the thirds. Open the paper. Mark the intersection points. Um, Connect adjacent intersection points. So I'm connecting all of them. This has six sides. I have created a hexagon. Carol is constructing an equilateral triangle. Means three congruent sides. With P and R being two of the vertices. She is um, going to use a compass to draw circles around P and R. What should be the radius of these circles? So let's see, 
Um, she's going to use a compass to draw circles around P and R, what should be the radius. Well, if this is going to be one of the sides, and that's D, I want... If I can draw a nice circle, that is absolutely awful, guys. <laughs> Let's pretend those are nice circles. I would want my point to be here. So to get that, I want my radius to be the length of D. Wow, that was a really bad circles. I apologize. Okay, Daya is drawing a square inscribed in a circle using a compass and a straight edge. Her first two steps are shown. So she has her circle, then she draws a diameter. She's trying to make this. Let's see if I can make a nice picture. Okay, I don't need these lines out here. That's not going to be helpful. Absolutely not helpful. What I do want to do is once I have this diameter, I want to cut that in half. And I can cut that in half by doing this because once I connect these, all these intersection points here together will be equal distant to make a square. And 31. That is actually it.